Five, four, three, two, one. Cue music. This is Movies First with Alex First. French post-impressionist painter Paul Gauguin's sad later life is brought into sharp focus in this slow-moving biopic in which much is left unsaid. The year is 1891. Gauguin, played by Vincent Cassell, is already well known in Parisian artistic circles, but is tired of the so-called civilised world and its political, moral and artistic conventions. Leaving his wife Meta and five children behind, he ventures alone to the other end of the world, Tahiti, consumed by a yearning for original purity and ready to sacrifice everything for his quest. Impoverished, sick and solitary, Gagan pushes deep into the Tahitian jungle, where he meets the Maoris and Tahura, played by Tuhai Adams, his muse, who will inspire his most iconic works of art. Life remains far from easy, and although he's manic in his commitment to his art, making a living from that commitment remains elusive. Edouard de Luc, who co-wrote and directed Gauguin, freely adapted the work from the travel diary that the artist wrote after his first trip to Tahiti in 1893. Gauguin painted 66 masterpieces in 18 months there. Deluc saw Gauguin as an extraordinary character pursuing a hedonistic dream. He wanted to get rid of all conventions and reconnect with wild nature. His Polynesian journal was about the mysteries of creation, the love of a distant land and his dedication to art. As Deluc saw it, it was also about love and freedom. You're listening to Movies First. For more, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. While everything in the film is based upon truth, it's a romanticised version of the truth. For instance, the key character of Tahura is a composite of many of Gauguin's lovers. Gauguin is a small film for specialist tastes. It has a lyrical feel to it. Religion plays a role. Cassell presents Gauguin as a man possessed, driven to do what he does at all costs, at first energised but gradually beaten down. That arc is characterised by the evolving relationship with the beautiful Tahura, his primitive Eve, as his jealousy takes hold. Pierre Cottero's cinematography captures the beauty and openness of Tahiti and contrasts that with the cloistered existence that Gauguin had in Paris. On the negative side, while I understand Deluc's intent, I felt Gauguin the movie at times suffered from its uneven pacing. On occasions, it was positively languid. I also felt that Gauguin's Paris farewell scene was overplayed. Still, overall, you get a good feel for Gauguin's predicament and state of mind. Unfortunately, the mastery of his work wasn't recognised until after his death, destitute at the age of 54 on the 8th of May, 1903. Gauguin the movie scores a 6 out of 10. You've been listening to Movies First with Alex First. Subscribe to the full podcast at Audioboom, Stitcher and iTunes or your favourite podcast distributor. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com.